This is a fire of burning magnesium at 3000 degrees Celsius. And if we don't put this out soon, it will melt through the metal and destroy my dog. Okay, I wouldn't actually do that. It's fake. Or is it? Okay, it's definitely fake. What do you choose to put out the metal fire? Here's your options. Gasoline, water, table salt, or more magnesium. That's right. Gasoline is the right answer. Here is what happens. Even though everything else is up in flames, the burning metal actually went out. Oh, would you look at that? It put the magnesium fire out. It still has magnesium under there. Fresh magnesium that didn't burn. See, it can be reignited. Yeah, no, it still works. Before we figure out why this happened though, we need to put it out again. So choose your next option. Okay, thanks for choosing water. Maybe you aren't a psychopath after all. Unless of course you already knew that water on metal fires is not a recommended option. Magnesium is a strong reducing agent, and when burning, it's about 3000 degrees Celsius, so it immediately reduces the water, essentially stripping away the oxygen atoms, leaving behind explosive hydrogen gas. But what about the obvious choice, a CO2 fire extinguisher? Well, as demonstrated by Steve Mould, the oxygen in the molecules of CO2 is stripped away and used as fuel. It will not go out with a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher. If anything, it makes it worse. Even something as cold as dry ice, which is made of solid carbon dioxide, still has its oxygen atoms taken away by burning magnesium. This is a simple redox reaction. The reason this behavior doesn't occur in wood fires is because reducing carbon dioxide or water isn't often energetically favorable. However, because this fire is at such high temperatures and magnesium is a strong reducing agent, the reduction and oxidation can happen extremely fast and even explosively. The reason using water is even worse is that water can boil explosively, taking bits of fuel with it and spreading it around. This type of fire is called a Class D fire and should be treated differently to other types. This is something that firefighters have to be careful with when dealing with burning vehicles, because some parts can contain a high amount of magnesium, and so when firefighters try to put it out with water, the car can potentially explode, spreading rubble and more hot magnesium in the surroundings. This explains why gasoline is the only winner in our test so far. There's no oxygen in the hydrocarbon chain molecules for it to use, and the burning gasoline steals any surrounding oxygen in the air from getting back to the burning metal. It's a shield of flames. And since gasoline combustion produces carbon, it leaves behind a black soot layer on the surface that prevents air getting back in. However, trying to change a small class D fire to a large class B fire, and then putting it out with a CO2 fire extinguisher, sounds rather ridiculous even if it would work. That's why there's still another option. If you chose the salt, you'd be the most correct. Upon pouring it on, you'll see it doesn't do what the other compounds did. The molecules in table salt are mostly made up of sodium and chlorine bonds, which is a highly stable and strong ionic bond. This makes it non-flammable and not energetically favorable to react. That's why there's fire extinguishers available that's designed specifically to sprinkle salt on Class D fires. The YouTuber Explosions and Fire demonstrated how effective these can be on various burning magnesium fires, and it put it out really well. That was fun. But I want to know if a fire extinguisher could be made that sprays gasoline or some other flammable liquid and still actually work. That sounds like a good idea. Oh, boy. Like the highly flammable liquid butane, which is a much simpler hydrocarbon compared to the various hydrocarbons in gasoline. Luckily, I already tested this five years ago when I was messing around with burning magnesium. Please note it is highly flammable and I do not recommend anyone actually use flammable liquids to put out fires. None of the experiments in this video should be repeated. Zach, you're gonna die! I'm not gonna die. Yeah, but Paul, that'll I... kill you! So once I got the magnesium on fire, I was ready to pour on the liquid butane. Uh, it put it out. Yeah, it actually put the magnesium out. Uh, the grass is on fire. That never happened. This actually put out the magnesium and the flames burned away so fast that it couldn't ignite the metal again, and it didn't even need a dirty carbon soot layer to cover up the metal like the gasoline does. I also tried reacting burning magnesium with a liquid that is essentially just water, but with an extra oxygen attached, called hydrogen peroxide. This is clearly a lot more reactive than water alone, and would be terrible oh, for putting gosh. out a fire. But this test with butane makes me ask one question. What if I made my own type 
type of fire extinguisher. So my idea is, is to take off the lid of a fire extinguisher and then fill it up with liquid butane and then put the lid back on and it will just naturally pressurize itself. And so then I can just pull the lever and spray liquid butane everywhere. And that should be great. First, I need to get the cap off. This isn't very easy, but this is how I recommend doing it. <sighs> Oh my god! I'm doing it! <laughs> I just need to remove the powder inside, which is non-toxic. <laughs> but it fills the air with this Holy smoke shit. of the corrosive dust. And it just kept spreading. Which is great, because it makes for a sick party nightclub. Okay, I left the empty extinguisher in the freezer overnight with some cans of butane gas. Cooling it down allows me to fill it up with an undetermined amount of liquid butane without it immediately boiling away. Now I expect some people to warn me in the comments of the air originally in the extinguisher, thus making an explosion if I light it up. But butane is much denser than air and pushes the air out as it evaporates. You can see the butane gas pouring out too. This removes all the oxygen inside so it can't explode from just a spark once it's pressurized. Now that it's all sealed tight, I left it for a bit oh. to warm back up. And the needle didn't move at all. But that's expected, because the pressure needed to keep butane liquid at room temperature is only around 30 psi, while this extinguisher is originally made for holding over 200 psi. Usually I'm not that scared by my experiments, but this one, this one's a little bit different. A little, little bit. Now I have all my safety equipment set up, and I'm ready to test if this terrible idea for a fire extinguisher can actually put out a metal fire. So I lit up the magnesium as usual, and mentally prepared myself for whatever was about to happen. Okay, three, two, one. I think I just made a flamethrower. I don't think that really worked. You should have seen the spray I got though, that was pretty cool. Well, after that spectacular failure, I decided to try again, but this time I would put it out with the butane and then follow that up with water to prevent it from reigniting. And now testing in 3, 2, 1. And now the water. And it's still on fire. It kind of worked, maybe? Not not entirely. You can see in the slow motion that even though the magnesium is no longer burning brightly, it's still hot enough to react violently with the water. But this did work years ago in the past with butane, so I figured maybe I was just blasting it too much and spreading the metal out. I prepared a cup of liquid butane instead, just like in my original test, and poured it onto the burning metal. Put it out for like a second, but not fully. It definitely puts it out for a while, but it reignites still. Maybe it just worked years ago because it was on a smaller scale. So let's go back to the gasoline, because that worked earlier. The dirtier combustion might perform better. I filled up the extinguisher with gasoline, and topped it off with some more liquid butane so it can be pressurized and to remove excess air in the cylinder. I didn't cool it down beforehand though, so most of the butane simply evaporated away before I could screw it back together again. This made it barely spray, but this might be helpful so that I don't blast everything away. Now it's the final attempt. This is gonna be interesting. Will a gasoline filled fire extinguisher put out a metal fire? Okay, three, two, one. Oh, it's kind of starting. I don't know if it's working. Oh, it's too windy. It's exposing it again to the wind, the oxygen. But it's burning quite a while as well. This unfortunately didn't work. So maybe I'm going crazy. Maybe it was just a fluke and I shouldn't be doing this because it's a really dumb idea, but I want to prove that it is possible because I feel like it's really weird that it worked the first time and then just kind of stopped working. So I've decided to go in the shed to get rid of any wind that might influence the reaction. And I decided to use a little magnesium ribbon for a small scale, held horizontally so that it burns like a fuse and I can spray some water onto it with a water bottle. And as I sprayed water onto it, you can see it clearly didn't go out and it just kept burning freely. It does not go out. But now what about if I fill this bottle up with gasoline? So I started spraying it when it was burning it did not go out at all. It didn't seem to do anything except just create big fireballs. 
So clearly this is still not working and I'm looking like more of an idiot here for even trying this experiment. But I decided to keep going and maybe gasoline's the issue. Maybe I just need a different flammable liquid. I mean, I've tried butane, I've tried gasoline, but maybe a different flammable liquid will work. Like acetone. So I filled up the bottle and then I started spraying it with acetone to see what that would do. Okay, I set my hand on fire, but that's fine. I mean, my hand is fine. It never actually hurt or anything, but it's kind of gone already. It's not really visible, but I think the hairs are a little shorter now. But yeah, that didn't work at all. So what I have to do now is, I guess, assume maybe it's the way I'm holding it in the air. Like, I'm just trying all these different variables. I'm trying to change things up a bit. There's no wind. Maybe holding it in the air is giving it too much airflow. And so maybe if I just do it on a solid surface on the ground. So I held up magnesium ribbon vertically in some tiles and then just dripped some water onto it as it was burning. And as you can see here, Cool, okay, so that clearly made it burn more by putting water onto it. So then my next test was obviously dripping gasoline onto it. Maybe that will work? Oh, I mean, it puts it out, but then it starts up again, you know? Oops, put that out, put that out, go out. Okay, I think that one did work. Yeah, there's definitely some magnesium left. Look at that. Yeah, wow, wow, okay. It's like nine times out of 10 it doesn't work and then just randomly it works sometimes. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure if I can actually make this into a proper fire extinguisher if it's so inconsistent, but it does show promise that maybe this is possible. I don't know though. Unfortunately, I have to stop experimenting with this weird fire extinguisher idea for now because I'm going on a trip to Europe in a few days, so my background is full of my clothes and garbage I'm gonna be packing, and I don't wanna accidentally set myself on fire a few days before going on my trip. So thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel. You guys are amazing, and I hope you liked this video and and found it interesting. See ya.